God is love. I firmly believe that. The Bible teaches that. And every Christian I know teaches and propounds that God is love. And yet in spite of that, there are some doctrines in the church that portray God as unloving. These are confusing to Christians and, and very confusing to non-Christians, people who are considering the Christian faith, looking at it from the outside in. One of the doctrines that portrays God as being unloving is the doctrine or the teaching that if a sinner dies, if a person dies unsaved, then they burn in hell forever. And, you know, I was raised in a, in a non-Christian home. I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I didn't become a Christian until I was in college. And I became a Christian based on uh, the, the knowledge of the scripture that I learned in a class and how the scripture fit together. And it was, it was years after I became a Christian that I really saw in scripture that God doesn't burn people in a place called hell forever. And what a relief to, to my heart to know that. And yet the teaching persists in Christianity and is held by very many good and sincere Christians that if you die unsaved, you burn in hell forever. And that's simply not the teaching of Scripture. What God does, or the, or the choice, if you will, that God makes available, he states very clearly in what is arguably the best-known verse in all of Christendom, John 3.16. Let's read it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And those are the two choices. The two choices, when, when you come to self-awareness as a human being, and you can make a choice for God or against God, there are two futures for mankind. One is, you can get saved and have everlasting life, or you can say, I don't want to live forever. I've looked at everlasting life and I don't want to live forever, in which case the scripture says that you will perish. The two choices that God sets before mankind is life or death. And what he, it's not life in a good place or life in a bad place. God does not set before us the choice, you're going to live forever. So you choose whether it's going to be a good place or a bad place. He never does that. <laughs> that choice doesn't exist in Scripture. What exists in Scripture is exactly what's in John 3.16. That you can have everlasting life or you can die. You can perish. In, John, in uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, very clear Scripture here. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Those are the two choices, life or death. And we have this life, the one we're in now, to make a decision. Now, part of the reason that the doctrine of there being an, an eternal hell, if you will, a place where people burn forever, part of the reason for that doctrine came around as a result of the teaching that mankind had an eternal soul. That was part of the Greek belief and it came through Neoplatonism into Christianity that mankind has an eternal soul. And granted, <laughs> if your soul is eternal and you die, your soul's going to have to go someplace. So it's either going to have to go to a good place or a bad place. And that was some of the foundational thinking behind the doctrine of an eternal hell. We at Spirit and Truth Fellowship have done some teaching on soul you can get a concordance, please. In fact, I invite you, get a concordance and look up, and try to find immortal soul. There's no place in the scripture that the soul is immortal. The soul can die, the soul can be destroyed. And God says, if you want to live forever, you live forever through Christ. Let's take a look, for example, at Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Matthew 10, 28, Christ is teaching and he says, don't be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in 
hell. And I need to point out at this time that the translation hell here is terrible. That's a terrible translation because when, when you read the word hell, what happens is in, in your mind, you, you, you get a mental picture. You get a mental picture of hell in your mind and it's a, a fiery place ruled by demons and devils and, and people being tormented. The Greek word is Gehenna. The word hell should never have been used in the Bible. There is no Greek word or no Hebrew word that should have ever been translated as hell. Um, here it says, you know, destroy your body in, in hell or Gehenna. Matthew 5.29 is another one. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better to you to, for you to lose part of your body than your whole body be thrown into hell. This is the NIV. Other versions follow suit. It's a terrible translation. The Greek word is Gehenna. What do we need to know about Gehenna? Well, in Hebrew, the word Geh means valley. And the word Henam was a man's name. And you can read about this in Joshua chapter 15, verse 8, where the northern boundary of the tribe of Judah was the valley of Ben Hinnom, which got which was the Geh Ben Hinnom, which came into Greek as the Geh. Henna. Now what happened in the Gehenna? Well, if you read Jeremiah chapter 7 and following, uh, verse 30, Jeremiah 7, 30 and following, what happened was in the valley of Hinnom, in the Gehenna, they started offering human sacrifices. And that made the valley very unclean. The Jews wouldn't go there. And so by the time of Jesus Christ, the Gehenna, the Valley of Hinnom, just exactly south of Jerusalem, was the city garbage dump. It was the city garbage dump. And so when Christ is speaking to his audience, now th put yourself, this is first century Jew in Jerusalem listening to Christ, and he says, if your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one part of your body than your whole body to be thrown into the garbage dump. Amen. That's exactly what he said. And that's what would happen to people. They would die and they would be thrown out. They would be destroyed. They would be burned up. There's nothing in what Christ said, nothing, that indicate you would burn forever. It's only when you translate the word Gehenna hell and you don't understand what Gehenna is and you think that hell is where people burn forever that then that, you know, that um, image, if you will, is imported into the verse but it doesn't exist in the verse. Now in the book of Revelation, the, the, the place of destruction that Christ called Gehenna, the garbage pit, is called the lake of fire. And so in Revelation chapter 20, this is what we read. Death and Hades are thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. And here in Revelation, the Bible calls this the lake of fire the second death. Well, wait a minute, then what's the first death? <laughs> well, the first death is like when you and I die. Well, when you and I die the first time, we're not tormented. And the second time, we're not tormented either. A person is thrown into the lake of fire, and then they are burned up. There's nothing in here about being burned forever. Absolutely not. And the Old Testament is very clear about the wicked. You know, if you, if you go back into the Old Testament and you read about the wicked, you read verses like here in Psalm 37, evil men will be cut off, or a little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. Not you can find them burning forever. You can't find them at all. They're gone, they're burned up. Malachi chapter four says, for behold, the day is coming. This is verse one. For behold, the day of, is coming, burning like an oven. Okay, everybody had an oven. We know how ovens work. When all the arrogant and the evildoers will be stubble. That's the stubble in the oven that gets burned up. The day is coming that shall set them ablaze, says Yahweh of hosts, so it will leave them neither root nor branch. You know what happens to stubble in an oven? It's burned up. We don't burn forever in hell. Sinners don't burn forever in hell. 
God offers us the choice between life and death. Let's choose life. Sometimes my feet don't wanna 